Hey, what's up everyone? This is Jesse and welcome to my YouTube channel, Strix Outdoors. This video is a follow-up video to my previous one on the Spy Point Cell Link adapter. I was able to do a little more than a month of testing with the Cell Link on a couple of different cameras. And so, although this is not considered, in my opinion, a long-term test and conclusive of what the adapter will do, certainly I think gave me a good indication of what it is capable of. And I wanted to report back to all of you guys and gals out there uh, to let you know how it did in case this is something that you're interested in and if you're trying to decide whether or not it's worth the purchase. Now, before we get into the results of the testing in which I was trying to determine how well the Cell Link adapter would hold up, uh, battery life, how many pictures it could actually transmit, how well it did on transmitting pictures and the interval, etc. I wanted to first address a few corrections that I needed to make on statements that I made in the previous video. So the first correction, or retraction rather, is my statement around the Spy Point app and how much it uh, kind of sucked. Uh, I was speaking a little bit out of frustration, and to be honest, the Spy Point app, in terms of the activation process for these different cell link cameras or adapters in this case, is actually pretty simple. Um, since the video, the first video that I published, Spy Point did publish an updated app which took care of the scanning feature to let it actually scan the QR codes that was included in the new devices versus the barcodes before. So that all works pretty well, and, and really, honestly, the activation process is pretty easy. The reason I did not speak very highly of it is because it is still a bit buggy when you're trying to use and take advantage of the referral program. And I've got other videos on the referral program. I'll mention it briefly here and put a link at the end of this video in the description below so you can find out more information about it. But basically, the referral program is uh, an incentive program that SpyPoint has in which you and I can both receive an incentive either in spy point dollars or a cash rebate if you're purchasing another camera after that. Again, I'll refer you to the other video. I don't want to spend a lot of time doing that here, but um, feel free to reach out to me via Instagram or Facebook for more information on the referral program and an email that you can use for that. Um, so as I mentioned, when you're trying to use that email, the referral email, or if you have a promo code that you're trying to use within the spy point app on your phone as you're activating your device, it can sometimes be really buggy and not work. And I'd actually tried activating the cell link the night before that previous video, trying to use a referral email, and it wasn't taking it for some reason. Uh, and that's why I was still frustrated, and I think that is still an issue. Also, since the release of that last video, SpyPoint has published firmware updates to both the cell link and the Link Micro S, which I mentioned before. So those are available on the SpyPoint website, and I would recommend that you download those firmware updates and install those on your devices before you set them out. Again, there's another video that I did that details that, and I'll have a link to that at the end of this video and in the description below. Okay, the next big correction that I need to make is some statements and opinions regarding the SD adapter card. So I do still have some concerns about how this works and how easily it slides out of the SD card slot, but unbeknownst to me, um, SD cards don't actually lock into SD slots on any device. I, I was unaware of that, and thank you and thank you to the viewers that actually pointed that out to me in the comments below. So for anyone that hasn't seen that video, basically the issue is that when you insert this SD card adapter into the SD slot, it clicks in and normally you would push in to eject it, which is fine, but you can also just tug on the cable and it slips out. Now any SD card does that, not just this SD card adapter, so I misspoke about that. Um, although the concern is still there that if you're not careful about inserting this and how you're routing this cable, you could inadvertently pull the SD card out of the slot slightly such that it would uh, not actually work. And I think one of the viewers uh, commented that they did have that issue. I do still have my concerns about this flat pack wire. Um, it does get pinched in the, in the camera depending on what options you have for routing and that uh, over time could cause an issue and cause this to wear out and eventually you'll lose communication between the camera and the cell link adapter. On the previous video, I mentioned the example of using the cell link adapter with a spy point solar camera, which has the SD slot on the side of the camera. So um, I don't have one of those cameras here. It's already out in the field. So I'll kind of demonstrate and maybe I'll put a splice in a picture from that from the previous video here. But basically what you would do is let's pretend this is the side of um, your camera, not the bottom in this case, but just the side. And this is how your SD card goes. You would want to route the cable in such a way that you could then route it to the bottom effectively. I know that's not the bottom of this camera, but uh, if we're pretending it's the Spy Point Solar. Now with the Spy Point Solar in particular, it actually has a little rubber plug that goes right about here and it's where the 12 volt adapter plug goes. So you can actually pull that out 
and loop this cable over around and through there so you're not actually pinching it but not all cameras have that and you will have to just be watchful of uh, over time of what this little cable looks like and whether uh, how much damage you cause to it for any of you that are getting spy point cameras and wondering why spy point says to use lithium batteries and not alkaline batteries uh, this is why We've all seen alkaline batteries that bust, and when they do in your camera, which they will almost inevitably do, um, it can quite literally ruin them. So um, I wouldn't, if I, if it was me, I would not take chances personally on ruining uh, your devices. Um, I know these cell links are not especially expensive, but certainly some of the other spy point cameras are. Um, just, just pay the extra money and get the lithium, so they'll, they'll perform a lot better for you anyway. So real quick, before we get into the performance and testing of the cell link, if you're already a subscriber to this channel, thank you very much. If you're not yet, I invite you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below. And I hope you find this content useful and I would really appreciate if you bullseyed that beautiful like button. That's by far the best thing that you can do to support this channel at this time and I would really appreciate it. All right, so the real question, how did the cell link do? It actually did very well overall in my opinion. Now I use the cell link with two different cameras that I currently own and one of those is the Bushnell HD trail camera. It's an older version. Uh, but it still works great and I also used it with the spy point solar camera I loaded up the cell link adapter with energizer lithium batteries and it takes eight of them and everything seemed to work really well now there are several things in my previous video that I pointed out that I was a little concerned about and so I wanted to test those and see what they actually did now the first thing I wanted to test was the statement about an accurate date and time setting on the trail camera so I purposefully set up the Bushnell HD camera with the wrong date and time to see what the cell link would do and it actually still transmitted the photos just fine. The photos themselves had the wrong timestamp um, and the spy point app basically indicated that the date and time were incorrect, but otherwise it still worked. So just in case you mess that up or something happens with the camera, don't worry, it's still gonna transmit the photos as best as I could tell. Now I did correct that and then the spy point app showed that everything was fine. That was with the previous version of the SpyPoint app, so I don't actually know what, what it looks like um, on the new version since I didn't redo those tests. I did not try transmitting video, but uh, as I mentioned before, the, the SpyPoint user manual says that it will not transmit video, so I just took that to be true. I did test, however, the one minute increment requirements that the SpyPoint manual for the cell link indicated. So I set my Bushnell HD trail camera to take pictures at five second and 10 second trigger speed intervals and that all seemed to be fine. It seemed like it was writing those photos to the cell link without any problem. Um, but you know, that's not a really rigorous test because it was set on trigger mode, which is motion activated trigger. And so it doesn't always trigger exactly at five seconds or exactly at 10 seconds, but uh, at least the indications I got, I think it worked and it still transmitted those photos. So as part of my testing, I took about 1800 pictures with the Bushnell HD transmitting to the cell link. Um, again, all those pictures were actually stored on the cell link itself on the micro SD card and I was able to retrieve those later. And as far as I could tell, it looked like it transmitted all of those. Now during that time, which was a course of about a week, the SpyPoint app indicated that the battery charge level on the lithium AA batteries was still 100%. And so I decided to push it even harder by setting it up with my SpyPoint Solar in time-lapse mode. So connected to the SpyPoint Solar, I first set it up to take 30 second time-lapse intervals and I took a total of about 18,630 pictures on that setting that all got transmitted to the cell link. And as best I can tell, all got uploaded to the SpyPoint system. I'm sure SpyPoint was quite happy with me about that. <laughs> so after a while, I did adjust the time-lapse interval to one minute, and that was actually primarily driven because the SpyPoint solar camera was having a little bit of a hard time keeping up with the battery, the internal battery that's charged by the solar panel at 30 second interval. I next went to a one minute uh, time-lapse interval on the SpyPoint Solar, and again, I took nearly 9,000 pictures on that setting. Again, I did spot checks and it looked like it was transmitting pictures sequentially as they were taken, but uh, of course I wasn't checking a each individual of those 20,000 pictures, but it looks like it did actually transmit all those. And so with the camera combinations and settings that I mentioned before, the cell link ran for exactly one month before the batteries finally gave out. Now, we'll, now what was strange about that is that for several weeks, the SpyPoint app actually indicated that the AA battery life was still 100%. It hadn't moved at all. And I was quite surprised by that. Uh, and then I started seeing a gradual reduction um, coming down into the 90s and then into the 80 something percentiles. Um, and then all of a sudden it just kind of cratered and it, and it stopped working and so I went to go check on it. Now it was about that time that the new SpyPoint app rolled out and there was also a firmware update to the cell link. So I went ahead and did the firmware update and updated the SpyPoint app. 
had a little bit of issue with the firmware update on the cell link but that was primarily driven because the batteries that I had in the cell link were actually low although the app didn't indicate that that it was too low once I switched the batteries out to a brand new set and then tried the firmware update again it actually completed it successfully so after that point I went ahead and switched over to my in a loop AA um, those are rechargeable lithium batteries into the cell link to see how they would do and they were working of course the battery life on those even at max charge according to the spy point app started off at 75 percent and then it was consistently dropping day by day with the settings that i had now what i find kind of interesting about the energizer lithium AA batteries that i was using so after the camera kind of cratered uh, because the batteries all of a sudden ran out and it went from like 80 something percentile battery life left according to the app to like zero over the course of one day um, I went ahead and pulled all of the AA batteries and I checked voltages on all of them to see if I could figure out what was going on. Surprisingly, all but two of the eight AA lithium batteries had voltages equivalent to what a brand new lithium AA voltage would have. There were only two that were slightly less. And then after they sat for a while and on further testing, there was one battery that actually had gone to zero, so basically failed. And so uh, I really can't explain what happened with the lithium AA's. Um, maybe one of them was bad or maybe because I was pushing it so hard with the time-lapse function and how many pictures it was transmitting it somehow preferentially drained one of the batteries or two of the batteries before it drained the whole pack that doesn't quite make sense to me but I, I don't know I can't really explain why the voltage on all but the two were pretty much identical to brand new um, of course, I, I don't have a really good way to measure what their capacity still is, but at least voltage-wise, it was still reading 1.6 or above voltage, uh, which is basically brand new settings. In either case, uh, transmitting nearly 21,000 pictures or receiving 21,000 pictures over the course of a month uh, is quite impressive, and so I really don't have too much doubt at this point that if you're using the Energizer Lithium AA's uh, and I would probably say the Lit 10 battery pack as well, you're gonna get a pretty good longevity with this cell link. You know, I think it does make a big difference that it's only transmitting pictures and that's what it's using the battery life for versus also taking pictures. And therefore, I don't think it's quite as big of a concern as I initially had around longevity and how long this thing would go for. Uh, again, I haven't done enough testing to really conclusively say this is gonna last months, but my gut feel right now is that if you set this out with normal kind of settings, normal type of volume of pictures that people tend to get from trail cameras, I bet this will run for quite a long time. Of course, performance can vary depending on your conditions. Um, I'm using this here in Texas. Uh, outside temperatures were pretty warm, which is not too bad for batteries. It was also in the city, and so it had a great cell signal, five bars the whole time. Um, and performance is gonna change if you're out in the field. So if you've got somewhere up north, colder temperatures, battery performance is going to be reduced. Um, similarly, if you're in an area with low cell phone signal quality, um, this is probably going to have to work harder to maintain or keep that cell signal, which would likely decrease your battery life as well. So all of those factors would have to be taken into consideration. At the end of the day, you know, I think it's actually a pretty cool product at a good price point. And so if you're like a lot of hunters and you've already got trail cameras sitting around but want to utilize the cell features, this is a good way to go. And I think that's especially true if you've got advanced features in some of your cameras like time-lapse mode. Now, in terms of value and what you should get, if you've got trail cameras that are very, very basic and you're trying to decide between using that trail camera and a cell link or something else, then I'd invite you to maybe consider the Link Micro S as well. So price point wise, the cell link retails for 60 bucks. The Link Micro S, including the lithium battery pack, retails for 199 that lithium battery pack itself is $50, and plus the Link Micro S has a solar panel that will recharge the battery, so then you eliminate that issue. Because even if this has great battery life, you're still subject to whatever battery life you have on your trail camera. But again, limitation with the Link Micro S is that it's very, very basic functions. No video, no time lapse, very few options on trigger speed sensitivities, and so you really just have to consider what you need out of your trail camera system and decide which is gonna be the best for you. Despite an overall good performance for my testing, I don't want to leave you with an impression that everything is just roses when it comes to the cell link or really any spy point cellular camera system. There have been several people that have commented on my original video that did encounter some issues with the ones that they purchased. Some of this may be user error, as these cellular trail camera devices can be a bit fickle, especially if you don't have very good cell signal in the area in which you're deploying them. Additionally, 
phone software is constantly changing, which in turn means that SpyPoint is constantly changing their app. SpyPoint has released a few firmware updates to the cell link as well, indicating that there have been bugs that they needed to work out. In addition to all this, you also need to be aware that pictures you receive from these devices are pretty low resolution, and sometimes this can be especially frustrating when that buck you've been looking for is just a tad bit too far from the camera and the picture is fuzzy. As a point of reference, my SpyPoint Solar is taking pictures that are normally about 400 kilobytes, so less than half a megabyte in size, but all of those pictures get compressed to 21 kilobytes when transmitted by the cell link. That's what you'll be receiving on your phone. That's about 5% of the original resolution. You can pay for the HD picture plan from SpyPoint, which runs you $5 for 50 full resolution pictures. You get to select which pictures you want to request to have the full HD version via the phone app. I still think this is a good product, but certainly not without potential problems and I want to set a realistic expectation for anyone thinking to buy one. My advice with any SpyPoint product is to make sure you're purchasing it from a retailer that has a good return policy just in case you find that it doesn't work to meet your needs. With that said, I'm still running my SpyPoint cellular cameras and they're working fine for me for the most part. You know, once you switch to using cellular trail cameras, I don't think you ever really want to go back. Well, as always, guys and gals, thank you for watching. Links to all of these products will be in the description below. Stay safe out there, and I will see you on the next video.